Now for our next session, programmatic creativity, and we welcome Emanuela, Director of Creative Solutions and Supply at Zaxus in EMEA. Emanuela will lead the next panel of experts in discussion to explore how technology and data delivered via programmatic can help power creatives that resonate with audiences and new innovations that are helping advertisers deliver their creators more effectively. So without further delay, over to you, Emanuela. Hello, thank you, David. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Emanuela Regalcati, and I'm the Director of Creative Solution and Supply EMEA here at Zaxis. Today's panel, so first I wanted to uh, welcome and thank you, the audience. And sorry, but let me stop my video. Can you see me now? <laughs> So today's panel is going to be all about programmatic and creativity and how we can leverage all the vast amount of data that we have and the, the technology that is available into the programmatic world in order to drive creative that better resonate with our consumers. So before starting with the panel and before start to ask all the questions, I wanted to remind the participate uh, the, um, the audience and participants that uh, we have a chance to ask questions to the panel. So please, please input all your questions uh, into the Q&A chat and we will have five minutes towards the end to answer um, all of that hopefully. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to our wonderful panelists. And um, for once, I would say men first. So Vitas, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Emanuele. I'm happy to be here. My name is Vitas, founder of Eskimi. Eskimi is a full stack ad tech platform. Um, I've just entered uh, Europe years back, more than 10 years. We've been developing ad tech uh, business in the mobile first markets in APAC and MENA. And uh, yeah, we operate on a Schemi brand and also supply the tech uh, with our white label solution and definitely exciting topic to, to talk about. So excited to be here. Welcome. Claire, would you like to go next? Hi, I'm Claire Ritchie, Global Head of Programmatic for MediaCom. I work across all elements of programmatic to support our global community and clients across strategy, tech, planning and people. Welcome, um, Amanda. Yeah, hi, I'm Amanda. I'm senior consultant for global programmatic advertising at the Show Heroes Group, which is a digital tech and media group with the focus on video, which I like to highlight already because uh, I will always refer to the video part. And uh, for Show Heroes, uh, to give you at least some ideas what the group is covering, we are providing an in-stream video solution, semantic technology, and a creative studio. And I'm very, very happy to participate in a panel which is covering like such an innovative topic. Yes, so welcome to the panelists. So I'm going to start uh, with one first question, and I'm going to keep it quite, quite open. How can programmatic technology help marketeers to deliver more relevant messaging? So maybe Amanda, would you like to start? I'd love to. I think this is also a good like question to just start off or kick off this topic. We all know that there are quite a lot of technologies in the market already, which focus like in programmatic, obviously on the an analytical side of things. But what we can see is that a real impact to have like on yeah, the creativity part of things is not actually covered by the technologies yet, meaning combining the analytical approaches with the creative approaches. And that then would be actually based, if done correctly, on a data ev evaluation and the learning process of data. And here I also mean the data about the creative performance and what kind of influence the decision making has on the whole approaches. And making use out of that will definitely have a huge innovative impact, but we are not there yet. Okay, Claire, do you agree? Uh, what's your view? Yeah, absolutely. I think programmatic is on a constant journey, constant kind of evolution. 
And we used to rely on standard formats, which have really limited scope for creative engagement. And, and this has been changing for some time now. So as the programmatic landscape has evolved, we have shorter, clearer supply chains and bigger, more impactful formats are being traded as the norm. And I think previously this has been very difficult to scale, but there are more solutions day by day. And additionally, thinking about capitalizing on the flexibility that programmatic affords, we can bring in up to the minute relative signals, uh, relevant signals, sorry. And for example, bringing the knowledge of what people are searching for, incorporating this into creative, and the power that scales through DCO, relevant audience targeting, programmatic strength, but it's its breadth and its position and the bigger pool of insight from our consumers and media channels that we can, that we can take notice of, the better. And the better we can then sharpen the precision of our advertising. And we, we all know that the funnel is far past linear and adapting as messaging resonates is only going to help us with driving conversion in our campaigns. Okay, good. Thank you. Right, guys. Uh, what's the view? How can programmatic help advertise the marketeers to, to deliver a better message? Yeah, so I think the beauty of programmatic is this the scale of it. And I think it's very important to, to first acknowledge that if you put uh, creativity on top of it, then you can engage in a personalized, segmented manner, millions and millions of consumers. But so Claire mentioned about the standard formats and some of the new innovations that come in. And I would add that today the technology is already ready to really make the most of the creative, even using the same standards that we have. You have the display media units where you can, on top of them, create rich media where the engagement is up to 10 times uh, higher than uh, traditional display, simple ad units. So you have gamified display ad units, again, using the same old school placements to, to use the mobile technologies to engage the users differently, creating mini games with kind of around the brand. Um, and then like today with kind of all the metaverse concepts, you have new blended in-game ad units, again, utilizing the same standards, uh, but just waiting a bit on the placements. Uh, and at least I see that the brands are starting to adopt it. So, you know, these are just a couple of uh, things which the technology exists, the scale exists then, and, and we just need to utilize that. And I think the reward is amazing because, you know, we already see that the brands which are using that, they achieve five, six, 10 times uh, better engagement rates uh, when they invest into that. Think about that prior uh, campaign planning. Okay. Thank you. So we know that there is a lot of potential and it's a very interesting space uh, to be in. But what do you think are the, the biggest challenges when we talk about uh, programmatic and creativity? Uh, Claire, would you like to, to give us your opinion from an agency perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I think digital creative can still, digital display creative anyway, can still be regarded very much as an afterthought. So it's not always afforded the time, thought, budget, for example, of you know, TV production with its, its longer term time scales, an opportunity for people to collaborate and, 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 and talk about really. So I think brands that are succeeding are those that are looking at their overall creative suite as one. So supporting messaging consistency, channel relevance, planning. We are still very much in a chicken and egg situation sometimes, which comes first, activation planning or creative asset confirmation, especially when we look at the efficiency that programmatic can bring in terms of being able to buy and book a campaign very quickly. In an ideal world, this needs to be a connected conversation for programmatic. So how can we use the best of what the industry can offer to deliver the best campaigns for our clients? And the reality is that those in platform trading are often disconnected from creative input and decisioning. This should be a real feedback loop, a continuous feedback loop of real time data from programmatic being used to inform future creative decisioning. But it's not the norm, but there are real pockets of good. I do want to stress that. And the other thing for me is very much tying creative success to appropriate measurement. It's like attention are becoming so much more prevalent. So how can brands measure creative execution impact on attention earned, for example, and really putting some rigor uh, behind that? Okay. What about Amanda? Do you agree? Do you, have a, do you share the same view with, with Claire? What are the challenges in your opinion when we talk about programmatic and creativity? 
Yeah, definitely. I, I agree to Claire, especially on if it's like the same for the video side of things, like the, they are the similar challenges we are seeing also on that side. And also the second point, which you said Claire about the measurement and like how to put like measurements or like combine measurements, the right measurement with the creative. I think this is like really where we are also lacking competence and understanding, like we as the ones setting that up, because first of all, we need to define what would be the right com campaign, individual metrics and KPIs to work with in order to, at the end, optimize the whole campaign, like what is relevant for me and on what mechanism do I want to proceed on having an optimized campaign. And we cannot, in the video point of things, like the usual KPI is like VPR, view through rate or post through rate. And it's like mostly just, oh, I want to have 80% at least. And then I would say my campaign is successful, but that's not deep enough anymore. And programmatic creativity would cover that we need to have more concrete insights in order to actually optimize and have the best impact there. And this is like one of the points I really see a lack, but also on the other side, I would also say that we are missing at the moment having the creative process and the programmatic process being like in one, being smoothly put together. So having the analytical and the creative part together and saying that, or like with the previous question, we don't have the technology, which is actually covering that right now. So there's a lot of manual work needed. And that of course, like is a lot of time consuming and so on. Yeah, there are a lot of challenges, definitely, but if you can do them or cope with them good, they can actually turn to opportunities. You're muted. <laughs> oh, sorry. Thank you, Amanda. So we see that challenges, there are uh, challenges also from a um, team perspective. So creative and analytics team needs to come together and, and talk to each other. So we need to have that level of expertise coming into the programmatic space. What are the challenges and how do you, what's your experience on this? Yeah, so I think I can continue a bit on that complexity, which also Amanda a bit touched on. So like I see a really big challenge because the space is complex that not all brands and not all clients are equally capable of uh, executing those challenges, where especially when it comes to technology, having the right tool sets, understanding the measurement the same way, and that definitely affects the results that they get. So I would say educational side of it and a lot of platforms and, and IB and all the others uh, can do a, a lot here to increase that awareness uh, and reduce that technical complexity. And coming, and that would be one, I think a lot of the brands really miss out on the opportunities because of that complexity, especially with creative support now, so many screens, so many devices. and and different formats. The second, I would also, again, touch upon on the coming from the mobile first markets where the complexity is even bigger and they, which was our surprise that they exist in Europe as well. We tend to do creatives for mobile and we think that they all work the same, but now with the rise of heavy rich media formats, video, if you really test on all the devices and all the bandwidths, even in regional, regional areas of any European market, that 40 to 50% of the users cannot really consume that, those creatives because they're, the devices maybe are, have less processing power, some old Android devices, or their bandwidth doesn't support heavy video streaming and so on. So I think that's still a, a challenge. It is not a, a showstopper, I would say, because that can be solved. But it's a challenge that increases complexity, which the advertisers need to always be reminded of and, and think of when they are targeting their audiences. So I would add, add those two. Thanks. So we had a look and we know that there are plenty of challenges, but with challenges also, they come a lot of very good opportunities in this space. And what do you think are the, um, the top opportunities in the programmatic creative space? And maybe Vitas, would you like to, <laughs> to start? Yeah, sure. Again, so just continuing on that complexity and the, the client, the need for clients to be aware, I think 
I can share two data points basically uh, from our experience is that if you allow clients to use the platforms to create the builders, the programmatic ad tech platforms on their own and without any on kind of deep onboarding and help based at least on our data, only 5% of them then eventually use those more innovative ad formats, try to ingest data into their uh, creatives and so on, which is extremely low. But if you add that level of support and work with the clients, and of course that depends, the clients have to be willing to do that percentage from the campaigns, having more sophisticated creatives, uh, which then lead to better results, grows to 40%. So that's a huge, almost 10 times uh, difference in terms of outcome what you can achieve if you combine people with platforms. And I think there's a really good opportunity here to, to say we have the right tool sets, but then creativity as in the old days of advertising cannot uh, be done without people. So I think combining the best platforms there are with, with people bridges that gap and creates that uh, outcome we're looking for. Thank you. And um, maybe can you explain a bit more? Only a small portion of advertisers are really uh, embracing creativity into the programmatic space based on your experience. Uh, what is the value that they perceive out of um, creativity? I, I, I think I mentioned that even if we compare the basic creatives, right? So traditional creatives, simple display media, because of kind of people are being bombarded with them, have the, the engagement rate of below half a percent. So if you look even at the simple, rich media, a bit more complicated, maybe gamified display media uh, formats, then you have around 6.57% average engagement rate. That's a 10X here, right? If you look at the below the funnel, naturally, you know, a lot of those creatives with data, with the right personalization, a lot to kind of help to filter out those users with intent. That again, uh, creates a lot of results better. So I think the clients, I think some clients really know that, know about that, but, but, and they're willing to do, but then complexity turns them off. So I think that's turning this into opportunity. I would say that if we solve for complexity, then the clients would embrace it. Thank you. And what's, what's your view on, um, on opportunities? Where do you see the big um, opportunities in this space are? I think if, if we look at it from a kind of a specific programmatic um, perspective, unlike other media, we have that breadth of data that we've been talking about to really understand not only what's working in general, but which part of the ad is working to drive that desired outcome. How does logo positioning affect ad engagement? Does the product image moving from the left or the right drive better awareness and better recall? And I think we have that data and we can test at scale now. And this should lead to better creatives that resonate well with audiences. And savvy brands are using programmatic as not only a medium to engage with their consumers, but also the ability to test and to really understand those nuances and those, those tiny tweaks that they can make. And this is leading to bigger and better DCO strategies and better, more addressable, more personalized creative. And I think when we then bring all that together with the full wealth of what's available in the, kind of the programmatic umbrella, move away from the fact that creative is just a visual display format, take on the move audio, triggered by real time signals, and then followed up with clear display messaging to drive engagement. And that's two totally different kinds of creative, but both that are really valuable. And the more we get them in the better place and the, that, that right sphere around them, the, the further they're going to travel with our consumers. Thank you. And um, Amanda? I'm actually really happy that you mentioned like the testing part about having the programmatic creativity being there as the goal or as, I don't know how to say that, but as the base of what we, we want to do, because at the end it's about like having experiences, like gathering the data 
and doing that constantly. I like the examples which you said, like about like just switching the logo from left to those are like tiny things, what can be done. And then at the end, it will have an impact on the campaign's performance and playing around with that, like constantly having experiences, always like checking the data that will like actually affect like relevance in the campaign and for the brand it means a higher brand awareness of course or like a higher return on investment so the campaign goals can definitely like increase and be optimized when doing the approach right like when going back, like you can always, always argue in about it. Those are challenges because it's not easy. As Vitas also said, it's complex. This all is complex. Programmatic advertising is already complex. And then we want to like combine it with creativity. That's like next level. This is not easy, but if done, then it can be really be an opportunity for sure. Good. Uh, thank you so much, Amanda. Uh, so we are, I know that we are already running out of time, but we started a bit late. So I'm going to take a couple of extra minutes at the end. Uh, just a, a very um, quick, um, uh, quick question around so innovation. So we see a lot of innovation every day in the programmatic space. Um, what have you seen any innovation lately or any good formats that uh, caught your eye? Claire, you can start. There's so much going on and so much changing all the time. I think where we're being really clever as an industry at the moment is our use of our use of DCO are really together, relevant in the moment signals with the right creative, and now really looking at that kind of test and learn exposure to how contextual targeting is affecting that sphere so that we're privacy ready, et cetera. But I think there's been some really great examples of campaigns recently with voice activated ads that are really innovative because they are about tweaking that creative that in the moment for the right opportunity, but also giving us an opportunity to allow consumers to purchase against their ads as well. Vitas, anything from your end? Any good creative? Like yeah, I think uh, what, what we're seeing again, most on mostly on the mobile space is the gamified ads, again, utilizing the same positions, but trying to innovate on them and I think you're just sharing a couple of like results. I think engagement rate is one. But I think Claire mentioned also the kind of the attention and how we can measure that. And I think in we, it's all, it's like some brands have started to use those gamified ads and trying to measure how many seconds of gameplay you accumulate. And, and that's definitely drives top of mind awareness and engagement for the brand. So from some of the campaigns we've seen that, that, that gameplay within the ad unit, it goes up to 20, 25 seconds. And then when you multiply that by, you know, a couple of million users that you reach, you have a lot of combined gameplay with very clearly with brand in, in within this ad and brand with brand engagements. So I think that's what we're seeing and it's a, not a, not a new format again, using the, the mobile technologies and the gyroscopes and all those things to, to engage, but, but if you create it as a game, invite users, uh, create like leader, like leader scores and so on that increases that uh, engagement level and results in a very deep gameplay time as a total. So that's, I think what we like seeing now. Thank you. So we have a question uh, from the audience and I think this is going to be our last question as we are running out of time. But in terms of innovation, do you see programmatic out of home as an opportunity to bridge creativity, especially from mobile, as the aspect ratios are very aligned? But so is programmatic out of home something you're considering? Uh, maybe does anybody in the panel want to want to answer this? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we are, of course considering out of home, especially as it becomes more programmatically enabled, it should be considered as part and parcel of what we can do programmatically. Again, as, as we've seen with lots of different things as they've taken their kind of programmatic evolution, we need to be looking at the opportunity as a whole rather than piecemeal. We need to be planning for the breadth of what we can do rather than something here, something here. And I think we're starting to see some really interesting opportunities, both with the kind of targeting that we can do in terms of relevance, but also bringing lots of different formats of campaigns together and the crossover between, between different channels. 
I'm not sure if anyone's seen it, but Oatly's recent meta ad that they they released poked a little bit of fun at uh, using lots of different mediums. And ultimately, they created a social media poster, a one-time Instagram post, but it was about originally a bus stop ad, which became a billboard ad, which became a boat ad. And you could see all the different iterations of this. And I think that whilst that's not necessarily you know, an articulation of programmatic out of home, it should be giving us the food for thought that we should be and are where we can connecting all of these dots. And that ultimately, we should be planning for best practice in our media rather than specifically audio out of home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, Claire. I think we are now coming to the end of our um, panel. So I wanted to take, take the opportunity to thank you, our wonderful panelists, and for the great conversation. And I'm personally very excited about what uh, programmatic and inclusivity will look like and if in the future so a lot of very uh, interesting new formats and a lot of different data that can be applied in order to drive the best in class creative execution thank you everyone and thank you to the audience as well for taking the time and then um, the great questions